all, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief, and today we're talking ketamine dosage. It's no secret that ketamine has grown exponentially in popularity in recent years, both as a therapeutic modality for conditions like depression and on the dance floor. With ketamine, it's especially important to understand dosage. The effects vary widely depending on how much you take and also the route of administration, which is how you take it. The effects also vary greatly depending on the kind of ketamine you're using and your tolerance level. Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic with psychedelic properties, and it's a very versatile molecule. It has a wide range of uses, effects, and there's a number of different ways of taking it, with the added advantage of its short duration, which is around 45 minutes to 75 minutes, and an afterglow that can last a couple of hours. It is used in medical settings by anesthesiologists for anesthesia, by therapists for depression and other mental conditions, and recreationally, be it at home for meditation and spiritual purposes, in a party setting, or in a variety of other settings. It is active through a number of routes of administration. It can be taken intranasally, intramuscularly, which is basically like a shot, intravenously, which is like an IV drip, swallowed sublingually, and also through the rectal mucosa. Its bioavailability, meaning the amount of the substance that effectively reaches your brain, varies depending on each route of administration, with IM and IV being the most efficient and swallowing being the least efficient. Generally speaking, low doses of ketamine will keep you in this world, albeit in a dreamy, floaty state where you can remain standing and somewhat interacting with people and the environment with increased sociability, mild inebriation, and a sense of seeing the world differently. Higher doses, which can increase the chances of negative side effects like nausea and confusion, will put you in a state where moving will be hard or impossible while increasingly higher doses will eventually produce an intense inner visionary experience, which is colloquially referred to as a K-hole, a partial or complete disassociation where your mind leaves your body and journeys into other realms, your sense of self disappears, and even ego dissolution is possible. I have experienced this. It was absolutely crazy. I could not move from my couch for at least an hour. It can be an incredibly fascinating and healing experience, but also disturbing and scary, especially if it's not integrated or you don't know what's going on. Even higher doses are considered anesthetic and remain the domain of licensed medical practitioners. Hi, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief. And for those of you who don't know, Double Blind began as a print magazine five years ago that I had the idea for when I was meditating. It hasn't been easy. We've been up against a lot, from censorship to all the challenges of running a media startup in the 21st century. We vowed to never have a paywall over our articles and to always offer scholarships for our educational offerings so people are not locked out from the information that they need to heal. This has all been made possible by the support of our members. Our membership comes with journeys to help people prepare for and process their psychedelic experiences. And we've teamed up with our favorite people in the psychedelic space to offer breath work, cannabis ceremonies, integration circles, and more. Plus the membership comes with a free subscription to our print magazine, which comes out twice a year. So if you feel called, I invite you to join us. Unlike other substances where it may be difficult to calculate precise doses like LSD or plant medicines, for example, in the case of ketamine, because it's a legal substance with ample medical use that is manufactured industrially in liquid form, which can be dried into powder, calculating doses should be pretty easy with the help of a precision scale or a syringe. Dosing by medical practitioners is calculated in milligrams per unit of body weight, kilos or pounds, and the same should be done in non-medical settings for best results and to reduce accidental overdosing. Remember, you can always take more, but you can never take less. Always work your way up. A line of 60 milligrams can do little to a seasoned user, but can knock a first time user directly into a K-hole, which I'm pretty sure is what happened to me. It's a very powerful medicine, so just be careful. We'll just add the disclaimer that we always do, which is that this article should not be taken as medical advice. I'm not a doctor. And as Arrowwood reminds us, every individual reacts differently to every chemical. So know your body, know your mind, know your substance, know your source. 
different people can respond very differently to the same dosage on ketamine. What is safe for one person is potentially really harmful for another. So start low. And you know, if you're unsure, have a trusted companion, guide, sitter, friend, anyone who you trust just present to, to help you if things just go in an unexpected direction. Intranasal ketamine dosage is the most usual route of administration for people using ketamine out of medical settings. Basically what we're talking about here is snorting a line of ketamine. <laughs> and usually the ketamine that you're gonna get on the black market is diverted from legit medical sources and manufactured in liquid form and then dried up into a white crystalline powder. As a form of harm reduction, it's a good idea to grind it well to reduce abrasion in the nasal mucosa. According to Arrowhead, the threshold dose is 0.1 milligrams per pound, or approximately 10 to 15 milligrams. A light dose is 0.15 milligrams per pound, approximately 15 to 30 milligrams, enough for a beginner to start feeling its effects. And a common dose is 0.3 milligrams per pound, or approximately 30 to 75 milligrams. A strong dose is 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per pound, or approximately 60 to 125 milligrams. The K-hole often can be reached with approximately 100 to 250 milligrams. Tolerance is a really important concept to take into account when talking about ketamine. Heavy users need larger quantities to achieve desired effects, and reports of people snorting very large quantities of ketamine at once, sometimes 500 milligrams or more, are not unheard of. New users need a lot less. And while 50 milligrams might be a pretty hefty dose for first timers, it may not do very much for heavy users that are far up on the tolerance curve. Ketamine takes about 10 to 15 minutes to kick in, and it's always smart to weigh doses, at least at the beginning when unfamiliar with the substance. It can be surprising to see how many milligrams fit on the tip of a key or miniature spoon, a common method for snorting small doses or bumps of ketamine. Bioavailability of ketamine when it's snorted is considered low compared to IV and IM administration. And according to most sources, Ketamine that's snorted has an availability of between 25 to 50%. While this route of administration is the same as snorted ketamine, the method of delivery is different. An intranasal ketamine spray is a device designed to deliver a predetermined dose through the nasal mucosa with the substance dissolved in a saline water solution at different concentrations. It's basically like, any nasal spray that you see on the shelves of the store, but it has ketamine in it. And they're known in the rave world, in the underground nightlife scene as case sprays. They're less messy than snorting, and they also offer the advantage that you know that each hit is the same dose. It also is more readily absorbable by the mucosa. People often make their own makeshift sprays, but they're also made to order in pharmacies with a doctor's prescription with a predetermined dose. In 2019, the FDA approved Spravato, a ketamine nasal spray manufactured by the pharmaceutical company Janssen, containing a filtered version of the medicine S-ketamine, supposed to be more effective for treatment-resistant depression. It's worth noting that Spravato has also been approved since that time for major depressive disorder. But there's been a lot of debate in the ketamine and psychedelic worlds more broadly about the efficacy of Spravato, this nasal spray, as opposed to IV and IM ketamine, which is a more common route of administration in clinics that are offering ketamine for depression, et cetera. Um, the prefix single-use doses of Spravato are 56 and 84 milligrams, and it has to be administered in a physician's office. This route of administration is used by therapists and psychiatrists in their practices who offer ketamine-assisted psychotherapy to treat depression and other mental health conditions. Therapists treating conditions like depression utilize a standardized dose of one milligram per kilo of body weight with the goal of providing a, quote, powerful interruption of the ordinary mind, according to ketamine therapist Lauren Taus. Naturally, the dose is adjusted at the discretion of the therapist, starting lower and then increasing it over time, depending on multiple factors. The onset of the medicine is around three minutes and its bioavailability is almost total at 93%. The threshold for IM ketamine is at 0.1 milligrams per pound. A light dose is 0.15 milligrams per pound. 
A common dose is 0.2 milligrams per pound, and a strong dose is considered 0.5 milligrams per pound. The K-hole, so to speak, can be reached at 0.75 milligrams per pound, and anesthetic doses are considered 1 milligram per pound. The intravenous route is mainly used by clinicians offering ketamine treatment for depression. It's done in a medical setting with a dripper and a needle inserted in the patient's arm, wrist, or hand. The infusion is slowly paced in a period of time, usually around an hour. Most reports indicate a standardized dosage of 0.5 milligrams per kilo of body weight. But again, with this method being the domain of licensed medical practitioners, doctors may adjust the dose anywhere from 0.1 to 0.75 milligrams per kilo of weight at their discretion, taking multiple factors into consideration. The bioavailability of this delivery method is the highest at 100%. Swallowing ketamine is the least efficient method to take ketamine as its bioavailability is the lowest among all the routes of administration at around 17%. The onset comes slowly depending on stomach contents and the duration is longer, but the peak is not as high. It is considered by many to be a waste of medicine, to be frank, as you are only effectively using a small percentage of it. Dosage ranges from 0.3 milligrams per pound for a threshold dose, 40 to 50 milligrams, 0.6 milligrams per pound for a light dose, 0.75 to 2 milligrams per pound for a common dose, 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per pound for a strong dose, and 3 to 4 milligrams per pound to reach the K-hole. Another method is to use ketamine lozenges meant to be swooshed in the mouth until complete dissolution and absorbed by the mouth's mucosa. This method offers a bioavailability of around 25 to 30 percent, rendering a slower onset than IM, IV, or intranasal methods. As ketamine's taste is pretty unpleasant, trust me on this one, it is usually masked with some fruity flavoring. Lozenges are compounded by specialized pharmacies with a doctor's prescription, establishing the desired dose, which can be anywhere from 100 milligrams to one gram. Again, at the discretion of a licensed medical practitioner. If you are interested in psychedelics and you've been reading articles on double blind or just Googling about psychedelics, then it's possible that you have been served up some ads on Instagram or Facebook for companies like Better You and Mind Bloom and Wonder Med. And I just want to name that there are a lot of companies right now that have popped up to provide increased access to ketamine for people who want to explore it for their mental health um, at a decreased price without having to leave your home. And there's a lot of controversy about these companies. On the one hand, you know, it's uh, available in most places in the United States. And if you see one of these ads or you go to one of these websites, you just basically, you know, fill out a form and then they're going to set you up with um, a psychiatrist uh, or someone, you know, some kind of medical professional via Zoom who's going to assess whether you're eligible. And if they decide that you're eligible, and most people I would say are, depending on sort of the rigor of that particular company and what their process is, then they're going to send you ketamine lozenges in the mail. And uh, I actually you know, tried one of these ketamine lozenges. We had a reporter by the name of Michelle Luke who wrote a piece for us on sort of the, the, the rise of all of these at home mail order ketamine companies. And it's really interesting. Um, you know, the, the box shows up and it's uh, basically lozenges that are in plastic wrappers and they come with an eye shade and a guided meditation and a playlist. And you're supposed to just do it at home by yourself, which is what we did. We lit incense, we lit candles, we laid in my bed. And um, I definitely, you know, I found the experience to be really interesting. I got some benefit from it. I felt sort of like I was floating out of my body. I felt relaxed. Um, I, I couldn't tell you what the efficacy of that is as opposed to say IV or IM ketamine because I've never done it before, but I can tell you that I didn't walk away from one one session with a lozenge feeling like, oh my God, my life is transformed. But also to be fair, a lot of these telehealth companies recommend that you do multiple sessions, that you meet with an integration specialist afterwards to process what happened to you. So um, 
you know, again, pros and cons. If you're interested in trying ketamine and you don't have the money to go to a ketamine clinic and pay for IV or IM, which can be in the thousands of dollars, and or you live somewhere where there isn't a clinic nearby, it could be worth exploring. But I also just want to provide the disclaimer that there are a lot of longtime experts within the field of psychedelics and specifically ketamine who are skeptical of ketamine lozenges for all the reasons that we just discussed, which is that they're not as bioavailable. Next up, something I never thought I would hear myself saying on a YouTube video, rectal ketamine dosage. Um, in all seriousness, rectal administration of drugs is common for medical treatments and people have also used it recreationally for a long time. In the non-medical world, people sometimes refer to it as plugging or boofing. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it and I'm not gonna recommend that you should do it, but I will tell you that the bioavailability of this route of administration is at 25%. The threshold dose starts at 0.3 milligrams per pound, a light dose is 0.6 milligrams per pound. A common dose is 0.75 to 2 milligrams per pound. A strong dose is at 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per pound. And the K hole is at 3 to 4 milligrams per pound. The onset is slow from 5 to 20 minutes and the duration is longer, lasting 1 to 2 hours. Generally speaking, I'll just say that given how complicated this is and given the fact that Ketamine isn't even that bioavailable this way. This is not a super common way for people to do ketamine. While this probably isn't gonna be super relevant for you, it is interesting to note ketamine dosages for anesthesia compared to recreational doses or for the treatment of mental health issues. The usual dose to induce anesthesia for surgery is at 1 to 4.5 milligrams per kilogram IV repeated as needed to maintain the state. IM dosages are 6.5 to 13 milligrams per kilogram for surgical anesthesia, also repeated as needed. Interestingly, this is how they started using ketamine for soldiers wounded in Vietnam in the 70s, where respiratory monitoring was not available. Ketamine is widely used in veterinary medicine, hence the horse tranquilizer stigma. Your cat or dog has probably taken more ketamine at once for surgery when spayed or neutered than many people. As a final note, I just want to say that at Double Blind, we're really committed to harm reduction. And what that means is that we don't tell people what to do and we don't judge them. We just try to give people the most accurate information that we have access to through our reporting to help them make the decision that's right for them and to reduce the potential for harm. And this is particularly important when it comes to ketamine. So if you're thinking about doing ketamine either in the clinic or with friends or in some other setting, then uh, just be mindful about it. It is, you know, addictive if you use it too often and you can develop a tolerance over time. For more information on ketamine dosage, check out the full article at doubleblindmag.com and for more videos like this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel.